Hey there folks, it's Lane with Windows10Update.com. Now if you're running a Windows system with a 32-bit version of Windows 10 and you want to upgrade to the 64-bit version, how do you do that? Let's jump in and take a look. So first things first, what you want to do is make sure that your system is actually capable of handling the 64-bit operating system. So right-click on the Start button and then go to System. From there, you should see your processor listed as well as the Windows operating system. So right there, it should say Windows 32-bit. And if it says X64 based processor, that means that your processor is capable of handling a 64-bit operating system. So this is really gonna be most useful for people that are switching to a system or maybe installing uh, additional RAM so that they're gonna have a total of four gigabytes of RAM or higher. If you're not using a system with at least four gigabytes of RAM, uh, it could actually be a negative for your system to, uh, to use a 64-bit versus 32-bit operating system. So the next thing that you wanna do is make sure that all of your other hardware installed on that machine is also capable of handling the 64-bit operating system. So if you have third-party parts, you know, third-party RAM, uh, SSD, um, video card or GPU, uh, sound card, things like that. Uh, you want to check with the manufacturers of those individual pieces and uh, check their websites to make sure that 64-bit drivers are available so that you'll be able to use those same pieces on the 64-bit operating system. Next, it's very important for you to go ahead and back up all of your data. It's not possible for you to uh, do a direct upgrade from 32-bit to 64-bit. Microsoft does not have this built into Windows. Um, so you will need to get an external hard drive of some sort and then back up all of your data if you need to save any of that. Alternatively, you could also back up all of your data to OneDrive. Obviously, this may take some time depending on your internet speed, but that is an option for you as well. The next thing that you need to do is download the Windows 10 64-bit ISO file from Microsoft. We'll leave a link to that in the description of this YouTube video and in the blog post if you're viewing it on the blog. So you'll also need to create a bootable USB drive if your system does not have a CD drive. So what you need to do to do that is go ahead and insert your USB drive, go into File Explorer, right click on it and choose Format. Uh, the, generally you're gonna wanna use the FAT32 um, formatting option. From there, just go ahead and drag and drop the ISO files right onto that USB drive. So once you've done all this, you want to go ahead and boot your Windows 10 system into a state that will allow you to install media, install Windows 10. So devices like the Surface Pro 3 that I have behind me are UEFI enabled. And basically you can actually go into Windows 10's settings and get to the advanced startup setting. So for that, if you have a device like that, uh, or if you need to check to see if your device can do that, you can go to settings, update and security, recovery, and then you'll see a section for advanced startup. And this will enable you to go through a uh, menu where you can just uh, you know, click with your mouse and, and, and tell the system to boot from that media. Other devices will require you to get into the system's bootloader using different <laughs> techniques and tactics. It really depends on the type of device that you have, how you get in there. Sometimes you can get there from software, other times there's a specific button configuration that you need to press when you reset your system. Sometimes you need to hold the F11 button while it's booting up. It just depends, so you'll wanna take a look at the specific uh, instructions from your manu manufacturer. So a simple Google or Bing search should be able to tell you how to do that. Now from there, you're just gonna go through the Windows installation process. That can take, depending on what kind of system you have, you know, up to a couple of hours. Sometimes it can be very quick, depending again on what type of system you have. Now, even though you have probably backed up all of your media, some of that media may still be available or really should still be available on Windows 10 after you have booted up the system. Um, so you're going to be able to go into the File Explorer, go to your C drive generally, and you should see a section there that says windows.old. And that should contain all of your files from your previous Windows installation. Uh, so keep note of that because that can take up a lot of memory on your system. Uh, the old Windows installation is still on there as well. You probably wanna leave the old Windows installation on there for some time, but after a little bit of time, you may want to remove that and save yourself some space. Now the reason we suggest waiting a little bit before you delete that uh, partition, that, win that old Windows installation, is that if there are any um, inconsistencies or incompatibilities with your hardware, with the 64-bit system, you may need to roll back and it may be easier not to go ahead and delete that right away. 
So then, of course, you're going to need to go ahead and reinstall all of your software. There will be nothing on there on your machine from your old Windows installation um, other than the Windows 10 apps that, that actually ship with the product. If you have any questions about this process at all, feel free to leave us a comment below. Thanks for watching.